So this video series is about our trip from Fort Pierce, Florida to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And so far we have shown you Mike arriving in Florida to our catamaran and on day one going from Fort Pierce to Cocoa Beach, which basically involved leaving the marina officially, uh, heading through some bridges and then checking out the ICW um, while cruising by motor. And then on day two, the progress was to go from Cocoa Beach to Daytona Beach. And so that really involved a lot of the same thing, very glassy conditions, so motoring along, uh, and then some interesting terrain along the ICW, as well as several additional bridges that had to be crossed, which seems like the theme of the ICW. So day three was going from Daytona Beach to St. Augustine, and there was more motoring along the ICW, very calm day, doing some repairs on the boat and then actually arriving at the docks in St. Augustine and getting to go off the boat to enjoy some land time. Now it's day four and the idea is actually to get out of Florida and into Georgia by St. Mary's. So this is the first time that you're actually gonna go out in the ocean, Mike? That's right, so I plotted a, a few possible outings uh, to, to lead the ICW depending on timing. Uh, unfortunately, f speaking of timing, on this particular day, I, I actually missed the, the bridge out and had to wait a whole hour I missed it by uh, one minute, so I had to uh, putter around for an hour and wait for that bridge to open uh, before hitting the outlet, or I guess they call it an inlet, it's a matter of perspective really, uh, out to the Atlantic. So that's what we did. And it looks like another beautiful day. Was there going to be enough wind for being able to be out on the ocean to actually put the sails up? Well, we had hopes uh, that, that the wind would be uh, coming coming around to the southeast which would have been perfect for some sailing it, it did for a while uh, but but ended up I think fairly weak uh, a little too weak to shut off the motors completely for more than a few minutes uh, and still Otherwise it her... would slow you down well, too that's it that we would have ended up missing our our proposed anchorage and, and actually more importantly missing the tide on the inlet to get back in again we wouldn't really be able to make it in uh, if we had to fight the actual outgoing tide but before trying out some sailing, you still had this problem with the dinghy from Daytona Beach. Yeah. And that had to be resolved. So tell me more about that. So what actually happened was I, I said before that the, the, the motor fell off the dinghy. That's not exactly correct. What happened is the, the pivot bolt that, that, that holds the, the bracket to the motor itself actually rusted out and then split apart. So it had disintegrated. So it wasn't because I didn't attach the thing properly or anything like that. It was actually because uh, the, the bolt had just rusted to nothing. Anyway, so I, the guys were, were fantastic. Dan and Rory would just tackle any job and, and, and just keep fighting with it until it was done and made walks, long walks to hardware stores. Uh, Rory even, actually, I think it was both of them. I'm not sure. Anyway, they, they walked all the way to a hardware store about two miles away. Uh, to get a stainless bolt to replace this bolt and that was the the previous evening and then this this day uh, Rory could not figure out for the life of him where he had actually put the bolt so we ended up just using two we already had and after had all to of that fix work it yourself. well yeah exactly So now with that job done, it was time to get the sails up? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the wind had just turned around, uh, so it ended up in the southwest, and we managed to point into the wind and get the main up and unfurl the jib for some perfect sailing time. Uh, we didn't, like like I said earlier, we don't have a lot of time to spare when we're out and about like this just because of our, our schedule to make our miles to our destination. Uh, but we had a really good time arguing with the sail trim and just learning how she handles under under sail for for a nice long stretch of, of quite a few sea miles. 
And then Wait. you turned the motor off actually for a little while here, and it was kind of cool to hear just the quiet of the uh, of the sailing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can see here that, that the wind was a little weak, uh, <laughs> a bit of flap to the sails, but. Uh, yeah, no, it, it was a, it was a fantastic time, and the motors on this they pull right out of the water, which I think I may have mentioned before. But it's the twin outboards, and, and they pull right up out of the water, so there's almost no drag at all uh, on on the boat. So she was moving along uh, in this vague breeze at a good four and a half knots, I think, uh, which is really not bad for for you know uh, minimal minimal effort and and uh, the best sail trim we could squeeze out of it. And it looks like a pretty amazing, beautiful day. Oh yeah, it was it was the best possible day to be out on the ocean. And I guess it was nice to actually get out of the ICW for a bit. <laughs> yeah. Cool, so if that day was not uh, enough wind, the next day is gonna be way too much wind as you move on from St. Mary's. So oh, this boy. seems like a brutal day. <laughs> and uh, this is the guys helping pull up the anchor. Yeah, so we didn't have any real trouble pulling up the anchor. That, that worked out fine, but uh, the wind and the, the cold was extreme. Uh, it was serious enough that we ended up having to put the, the, um, the cockpit enclosure up. Uh, just to to keep the wind down so that we could a hear each other and and b just not freeze solid and did it do a good job of keeping you warm yeah actually the enclosure was amazing uh, we didn't put the whole thing around so the the back piece we didn't put around but the the cockpit uh the windshield was was just right it's a little windy this day we were heading pretty much due north and the wind unfortunately was coming from pretty much due north uh, from 25 to 35 knots almost all day so it was relentless and really made a big impact on our on our boat speed and our progress and as far as the number of miles we could put behind us uh, and in the bigger parts of the water uh, it, it got very very rough and choppy <laughs> So were you behind schedule then? We were by quite a few hours by the end of that day. We had to be pretty creative when it came to finding a spot to anchor later. I'm having a bit of trouble driving in a straight line. So how was it in terms of your crew? Was anybody seasick or did they handle it okay? Well, we had some borderline cases that involved a lot of use of gravel or, or if you're American, Dramamine, uh, I think is what you call it. But uh, yeah, they, they, I guess they dosed themselves up pretty well to make sure they wouldn't have any incidents or, or uselessness generally. Uh, of course, that made them a little dopey, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah, the, I mean, the waves were, were pretty extreme in, in the crossings of the inlet here. A good they, they weren't that tall maybe no more than five or six feet but their period was like seven seconds between them at, and yeah it just makes it pretty uncomfortable uh, sort of bull riding experience what was it like inside the boat at this time well I didn't spend a whole lot of time inside the boat I, I went down to get a couple of things a couple of times and and generally people were just inside sitting around and reading and perfectly comfortable I don't think anything fell off of anything which was pretty cool like there were just we just put stuff on top of surfaces inside we were careful with it there weren't heavy things that could damage somebody but uh, nothing nothing even shifted I think at all uh, that that whole time yeah I'm always thinking about what it'll be like when the kids are uh, are on the boat and we're getting a rough patch of weather yeah I don't I, I honestly don't think it, it that it's that bad um, 
No, I didn't feel that uncomfortable apart from general exhaustion to some degree because it takes a lot of concentration and focus to, to steer straight and, and you know, you have to adjust your, your angle of attack to the waves sometimes so you don't get totally thrown around. And here the guys were up front looking for a rope or something? Yeah, they were. look as if the bad weather discouraged your crew too much not at all they were very helpful um you know uh, when when uh, the weather got bad and everything was rough they were all very positive and went and fetched me coffee when i asked for it <laughs> and were... i guess you can't expect to have beautiful weather every day no exactly and i think a lot of people would have just tucked into a, a little cove and and dropped the anchor and waited this out but of course we didn't really have the luxury of extra days that i actually to be honest i did have one extra day uh, on the schedule but <laughs> i didn't wanted to save that in case there was a real emergency but yeah it was just it's such a great experience uh, to be out there with those guys they were just fantastic crew members and we had a lot of fun <laughs> 